Listen! Hello everyone, I'm Stephen Quartermain and welcome to Flinders Park in Melbourne for the big local derby between the Melbourne Tigers and the South East Melbourne Magic. A packed house here tonight, great atmosphere and what a game it promises to be. First against fifth on the ladder as we take a look at the team standings in the 1993 NBL Mitsubishi Challenge. Magic on top, just ahead of the Perth Wildcats, Brisbane third, Illawarra fourth, Melbourne Tigers fifth, Adelaide, Newcastle and Canberra make up the top eight. Over the page, North Melbourne, Gold Coast and Sydney still in finals contention. However, Hobart, Townsville and Geelong cannot make it. Welcome now to my co-commentator for this evening, Dean Templeton. Big game, isn't it? And uh, plenty of feeling out there. Oh, there's none bigger, really. Both these teams played off in last year's grand final, as we all remember. And uh, tonight promises to be a beauty. The two best offensive teams in the league and Magic the best defensive team in the league. So we'll just see who's going to win this one. Well, both these sides are chock full of talent. Let's have a look at the starting fires for the Tigers and the Magic. Look at the names there, Gaze, Copeland, Sibley, Simmons and Bradkey, the starting five for the Tigers, while for the Magic, it's Rose, Graham, Lucas, Ronaldson and Bruce Boland. And off the benches. Well, both teams have relatively deep benches. For the Tigers, Warwick Giddy, Ray Gordon, Walter, Tenner and Whitehead. For the Magic, it's Parkinson, Perry and Dorge, both with some injury uh, problems for tonight's game, Simon Curl and Lee Waitson. Well, the key tonight, Dean, is the battle between Andrew Gaze and Darren Lucas, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Uh, of course, we know that Andrew Gaze is the best offensive player in the league, averaging around 33 points per game. And Darren Lucas, on the other hand, is probably the best defensive player in the league. Have a look at some of those stats there. 27, 28 years of age have been playing against each other since they were juniors. Average points there, 33 points for Andrew Gaze. Only 14 for Lucas, but his value comes in his ability to stop the, the uh, opposition players. And, in fact, Andrew Gaze is average against the Magic is about four points less than his overall average. Well, speaking of those two customers, as Peter Donegan reports, Darren Lucas has already scored some valuable points today. Andrew Gaze knows how important it is to prepare for a major game in the right manner. So today it was carbohydrate loading at lunchtime. Good afternoon, how are you? How are you doing? Temperature? Yes, yeah, please. Sure, just here. Little did he know, though, he'd already entered enemy territory. Cafe Bay is owned by his opponent tonight, the Magic's Darren Lucas. G'day Drew, see how are you? Oh, good on, Kitty. Hey, Darren, what are you doing here? Nice of you to get dressed up for the occasion. What's on the menu, uh, Darren? Uh, special for today, we've got a, a nice and spicy carbonara. Carbonara Yeah, that'll be me, I, I, I think... Uh, Two of those? Yep, sure. Okay. Nothing to worry about there, or is there? <laughs> Oh, looks beautiful. Come on, Ara. Gee, she's a bit old, isn't she? Excuse me, can I get some water, please? Yep, sure. Thanks. So, it looks as though round one has gone to Lucas. But I wonder just how much the fiery lunch might affect their battle. A bit of garlic in this stuff, so hopefully that might keep him away from me a little bit. I'll hopefully be hitting him in the stomach trying to bring it up. <laughs> well, Andrew Gaze can play basketball, but I don't think the gold logie is under threat just at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> don't give up your day jobs, no, boys. The smell of garlic from here. There is Darren Lucas, and he gets fired up for these games, that's for sure. Of course, grand final replay. These two teams played the best of three grand final series last year with the Magic winning. Earlier this year, the Magic 113 defeated the Tigers 102. So we've got the ascendancy at the moment. As we have a look at the coaching records, Lindsay Gaze, 260 games, winning percentage of 43%. Look at Brian Gorgian's record, 156 games, and he's won 104 occasions. It's a winning percentage of 67%, and you cannot do any better than that, Dean Templeton. No, that is really a tremendous record for Brian Gorgian and uh, such an intense individual as we know. There he is talking to his troops at the moment and what a weekend they have. Not only do they have the Tigers here tonight, but they've got to fly all the way to the other side of the country tomorrow against Perth. Look at Lindsay Gaze, you wouldn't yeah, think Lindsay's he's fired. Fired. But he, uh, he's having fun with the guys. 
really is one of the biggest games of the season. But What's we're your tip? Be a beauty. Well, I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> it's hard, isn't it, well, tonight? Well, form tells me magic because they really are in super form. Tigers coming up against a, a, off a loss two weeks ago uh, against Sydney. Tigers haven't lost to Magic here when they've played at home. Uh, I'm going to stick my neck out say Magic, but it could easily go the other way. Well, I've gone for the Magic all week, but I've just got a sneaking suspicion tonight that Andrew Gaze might have a night out. I reckon the Tigers might get up. We'll find out as we're about to start here at Flinders Park. Almost a full house. Over 14,000. Fantastic crowd. Tigers first possession of the ball they're in the red and gold they're going to the right of your screen magic in the all black there's Leonard Copeland Simmons already Gaze and Lucas go at it there's Bradke it's like Ronaldson will have the job on him perhaps pass to Simmons turnover well, it really looked to say that pass was in fact meant for Bradke who shook Tony Ronaldson loose and David Simmons uh, unfortunately for the Tigers thought it was for him and intercepted the pass and a turnover against the Tigers. What some sensational matchups all over the court. Really is you know, the, the cream of Australian basketball. And here it is in Melbourne tonight. There's Graham had a sensational game last weekend. His best game for the Magic. Lucas assists to Bolan. First points of the game. Go to the southeast Melbourne Magic. The reigning premiers. They lead the Tigers to zip. Well, as I said in the opener, both of these teams are excellent offensive teams. The Tigers averaging nearly 107 first in the league. Magic up around 104, they're second in the league. The big difference is that the Magic have been keeping teams to just 90 points per game all season, and that's the number one defensive team in the league. And that's where this game will be won or lost, up the defensive end. Ronaldson, foot on the line for two. Gaze wins the rebound war against Lucas. Here's a chance for Melbourne. Gaze to Sibley. Sibley back outside to Copeland for three. Oh, great start for Leonard Copeland. A big three-pointer, and it's an area where he's been a little down this season, and that certainly will give him a lot of confidence. Three to two, Tigers lead. There's Ronaldson with the basketball. Off the ball, I reckon Bracky's been pinged for a push, has he? No, they've gone for Rose, and he cannot believe it. Two, one, to hold there. like to see a replay of that one. Don't have it. But anyway... Eddie Crouch is the man calling the shots and he's the most experienced ref in the game so I'm sure he was correct. Well he was right on the spot and, and it was difficult to see. There we see Andrew Gaze taking it straight at Darren Lucas. The ball dropped in the basket but it was deemed to be way well a long time after the foul. You see Andrew Gaze very aggressively going towards the basket. Little doubt that that was a blocking foul or a holding foul there on Darren Lucas. He's pleading his innocence. But that's a good way for Andrew Gaze to start. Be aggressive and attack Darren Lucas. Speaking of aggressive, there's Dave Simmons. He loves it when it gets tough. Shot's pretty ordinary, but Simmons there for the rebound. Drops it in, draws the foul. The foul's on David Graham, and Sidley will go to the line for an extra shot. Good rebounding by Robert Sibley, and, and the Tigers do have a, a size advantage over Magic. And Robert Sibley, one of the biggest players on the court. And he did well around the basket then, putting the ball back in. And, of course, gets the extra shot. And, in fact, converts that into a three-point play. So, immediately, the Tigers go out to a 6-2 to two lead. And that rebounding could be a, a bit of a problem for the Magic. David Graham with the basketball. There's Robert Rose. What a great year he's having. Three triple-doubles to his name. Lucas drives, up goes the shot, misses. Bradke tries to use his height to the Tigers' advantage, and it will be a Melbourne ball from the side. Six to two. It's a Melbourne home game tonight. Copeland, oh, great move to Bradke, fouls on Bolden. So that was a slick move from the Tigers, and they're pumped. Well, there's a classic basketball move, the give and go. You saw the pass come down in there to uh, to Copeland. And Bradke make the big cut to the basket. There was a double team on Copeland. Bradke found himself free. Drew the foul, and he goes to the foul line. That is, in fact, the fourth team foul on the Magic, and there were only 
two and a half minutes into the game. Bracky certainly has improved his free throwing over the past couple of months. It's eight to two. Tigers out by six. He Rose. May, he may have improved it, Steve, but he's still shooting just 55% as Tony Ronaldson finishes up under the basket. And uh, it is getting better, but it has been woeful in the past. Copeland for three. That was partially blocked by Robert Rose in those long arms. Got up and got a hand on that one. Graham brings the ball up again. There's Lucas. Short arms it. Turnover. Rose wins the ball back. Clever pass to Bolan. He drops in the two. Screams for a foul. Doesn't get it. Eight to six. Tigers by two. Great assist pass there made by Robert Rose. And already in this game he has two assists. Could we be in line for yet another triple-double gaze from just a long, long way out. Again, for that time for two he had to put on the line. Graham comes over the ball. He's got Rose to his left. Goes all the way himself, draws the foul. And David Graham, geez, confidence is sky high after last week's game. He had his best game for the year, 21 points against Illawarra, shared the MVP honours, and he just looks a different player tonight, full of confidence. Yes, well, uh, in a different role exactly. too. Exactly. Well, Brian Gorge, you know, I think, has said to, to David, look, don't worry about what's happening, just get out and play. And you could see in that situation now, he had Rose to the left, but it was an excellent decision made by Graham because Ro Rose was covered. And so he went to the basket on his own. The old aggressive David Graham drew the foul. Now here's the opportunity from the free throw line. So it's back at eight points apiece. Good fight back by the Magic. They looked in a little bit of trouble. A great matchup inside with Mark Bradkey and uh, Tony Ronaldson. Ronaldson really the, the young gun in that inside position for the Australian team and Bradkey has been there for a while. Sibley again draws a foul under the basket. Second personal foul on Bruce Bolan. There it is, just a little hand in there. So Sibley at the foul line. There's no one in foul trouble at the moment, but two fouls at this early stage are on Bolden. He, he isn't prone to foul all that much, but if he does pick up a third one, well then that's another uh, sort of piece to the puzzle that has to be put together and it would make Brian Gorgian think a little bit more about what he does. There's Graham. Bolden sets the screen. Graham shoots. David Graham is running hot. He's four points and it's 10 to 8. Magic by two. Magic doing a good job defensively at the moment, just throwing the Tigers out of their set offense. You saw Simmons having to, to key the offense in from the top. Gaze looking to penetrate, kicks it to Sibley, back to Gaze underneath, and Bolden gets a piece of it. Lucas does well, gives it to Bolden, foul should be on Gaze. Gee, that was pretty tough in there. <laughs> well, sensational hustle by the Magic then with Lucas on the floor and Bolden working hard. Really tough stuff under the basket. So it's 10 to 8. And it really got tough in there. And Gaze was pinged for the foul. Darren Lucas with the basketball. Clever pass. Slick pass to Graham. Two more points. Well... It really does look like a new David Graham out there, doesn't it? You're so right in what you said. He's just uh, totally back to his old style. A oh, big rebound from Bruce Bolan. Rose. Misses the shot. Rebound Bradkey. Gaze gets past Rose. He shoots for three from a long way out. Pretty ordinary shot. It was a very quick shot then by Andrew. That could be an offensive foul. No. The foul on Andrew Gaze, uh, much to the disappointment of the Tigers fans. It really did look as though Gra David Graham pushed him away. Andrew Gaze isn't all that impressed. Let's have another look at that. Well, Gaze was definitely cutting him off and coming across his path. And David Graham, I suppose, initiated the contact with his arm. But there was no doubt that Andrew was coming across his path. Classic example of perhaps letting it go. What do you reckon? Yeah, well, I think yeah, that would have been a good no call. But the referees want to get right on top of this game at the start. They don't want any funny game, it's a, a, any problems out there. It's going to be a lot of pressure on them as well as the players tonight. 
12 to 8, magic lead. Lucas is Rose. 10 second warning buzzer on the shot clock. Graham again with the shot. Eight points, David Graham. And he's cutting his way through the Tigers at the moment. There's a double substitution for Melbourne. Giddy and Whitehead in. Sibley and Simmons to sit down. Magic still with their same starting five. Look at that field shooting percentage. Magic 60%, Tigers 22. Magic have run off 12 unanswered points. And uh, David Graham is just playing so aggressively out there offensively. He's made his mind up that he's going to attack the basket every time. He's doing a great job. Simmons goes hard to the hoop. Couldn't connect. Comes off Tigers' hands. Magic side ball. And when I said Simmons sat down, it was my mistake. In fact, Leonard Copeland sat down for the Melbourne Tigers. Well, Copeland did look as though he was blowing a little out there, Steve. It was a, a bit up and down there for a while. He, he may not be fully fit. He has had knee problems. Ronaldson for three. Rebound to Andrew Gaze. Quick pass to Simmons. Simmons to Whitehead. Turnover. Guess who's got the ball? David Graham. Quickly to Lucas. Lucas keeps possession. Back outside to Bolden. Bolden thought about the three, decided against it. Timeout called by the South East Melbourne Magic, and they're doing well. They're leading the Tigers 14 points to eight. Just past the halfway mark of this first quarter here at Flinders Park and the local derby between the Melbourne Tigers, South East Melbourne Magic. And it's the Magic at the moment leading by six, 14 to 8. Make that 16 to 8. And the Magic have now scored 14 unanswered points. Gaze drives. In it goes. Well, Andrew Gaze was just like a steam train down. He was not going to be stopped. And there was little that Darren Lucas could do. The Magic, they execute their offense so well. They just pass the ball crisply to each, each other. Look at that. A great pass again to Ronaldson. He couldn't finish it this time. Good defensive pressure then by the Tigers. They look dangerous every time they get the ball. Does the Magic. It has to be a foul on Tony Ronaldson. He was always out of position, just backing his way into Mark Bradke. So Bradke shall go to the line for a one-on-one -on -one situation. Drops in the first, gets the second. That's six team fouls against the Magic, and uh, you know, that's quite a few for them. They're only averaging... You know, around the 18 fouls per game. And there's big John Dorge coming into the game very early. Has been out for the majority of this season with a knee injury. And sees action in the first quarter. And there's a bit of a doubt over, during the week over Dorge that he perhaps uh, re-injured that knee. Well, I, I heard that it was in fact the other knee. It was his right leg. It was his left knee that was the one. It's his bad knee. Yeah, well, he's got the bandage on the right, so... <laughs> it's his knee. So his, <laughs> his reconstructed knee is now his good knee. <laughs> it's not uncommon for players to come back from knee injuries and actually damage their other well, knee because they put so much you? pressure. Yeah. You're a man who's had knee problems, as I have, and you know that you do tend to favour the other leg and as a consequence you put more pressure on your good leg. I hope everybody out there understands what I'm saying because I probably don't. Lucas. Good defensive work from Whitehead. Steal from Gaze. And that timeout called by the Magic has seemed to work against them as the Tigers took that opportunity to tighten up. Rose misses. Rebound Simmons. Gaze. Tigers into attack again, takes on two of them, and the foul will be on Parkinson. Well, there's no doubt that the Tigers have come out and just cranked that defensive pressure up a little bit. There's a lot more intensity up the court, trying to put some pressure on the ball handlers, and little doubt about that foul either. It was, uh, it was a raffle, and who got that one, either Lucas or Parkinson. Andrew Gay is playing very aggressively. He's really looking to take the ball to the basket, and that's a good ploy for him at this early stage. Later on, it may open him up for the three-point shots. 
you're all so familiar of him shooting. Andrew Gaze averaging 32.5 points per game this year, the top scorer in the competition, with 585 points before tonight's game started. He's up to six, and at 16-14, Magic lead the Tigers by two. Here's the clock on your screen, four and a half left in this first quarter. We can see a lot more pressure on the ball by the Tigers. They're really trying to get out and pressure the ball handlers of the Magic. Here's Lucas left alone. Back to Parkinson. It'll be a jump ball between Bolden and Simmons. A little bit of by playing going on between Stephen Whitehead and uh, Bruce Bolden. So we like to see good aggressive basketball. There's no real love lost out there when these guys step on the court, certainly away from the court. I don't think they're enemies. Great tip by Simmons to Gaze. Fantastic effort to keep the ball in play. Whitehead unfortunately misses the shot. Would have been a great two-pointer for the Tigers. Now a chance for the Magic to extend their lead. There's Rose back to Lucas. Parkinson the three-point specialist. He'll be key to do well. Gaze almost the steal. Still a magic ball. 12 seconds left on the shot clock. 10. Here's Rose off the ball between Simmons and Bolden. And Simmons gets pinged for the foul. You see in this case, John George set the screen on David Simmons. Bruce Bolton fought over that screen. And David Simmons in trying to get her over it, in fact held on to Bruce Bolden. And Simmons will go and have a rest now. You'll see the screen set here by John Dorge on Simmons, and Simmons fighting over that screen comes into contact with Bruce Bolden. There was little doubt that there was contact made by Big David. Bruce Bolden averaging 24 points per game this year. And he doesn't miss many of those. The second best rebounder in the competition at the moment behind Mark Davis from the Adelaide 36ers. 18 to 14, Magic by four. Graham now got the job on Gaze, with Lucas sitting down. There is Gaze underneath. Credit that one to a great pass made by Robert Sibley. A set play by the Tigers, Sibley knew where Andrew Gaze would be, just lobbed it over the top of the defence, a great pass. Tony Ronaldson comes in, Bruce Bolden takes a seat, there's that pass over the top of the defence. Gaze cleans it up in a little uh, underneath the basket shot for Andrew Gaze. You'll see, I think, Steve, tonight, Brian Gorgian going to his bench quite a bit because, of course, the guys have got to come up against the Perth Wildcats tomorrow night, so he'll be wanting to rest as many of his players as he possibly can. It's a huge ask, isn't it, when you look at the fixtures, it, I guess it really is, as Graham puts in two more, he's in the double figures, it really is a, an unfair draw for the Magic when you look, they're going to play in Melbourne tonight, two more points to Gaze down the other end, and then fly all the way to Perth and play tomorrow night. It seems crazy, I mean, it's, a, it's the nightmare, you know, road trip, really, you couldn't get it any further apart. Again, we saw Gaze on that drive, just taking the ball down the left-hand side of the floor, as he has done on three previous occasions. Magic are going to have to come up with some sort of plan to stop that. Parkinson finds the gap inside the paint and scores a layup. So really, we aren't seeing a lot of outside shooting by either team. What we are seeing is the ball being penetrated either by a dribble or by a pass. And Andrew Gaze is caught for a travel by Eddie Crouch. And yet another turnover against the Tigers. And that's Melbourne's fifth turnover already. Long pass we see there to Parkinson. Blocking foul against Bradkey. Here's a replay. You're not getting past here, son. Oh, that's a good ploy by Mark Bradkey. You know, don't let those guys come into the paint. That's his area. He wants to control it. And really, yeah, that's a good hard play there. You know, it was a tough foul. But that's the way to knock them down and uh, just let these guys know that if you come inside, then you've got to deal with me. Parkinson misses the foul shot. And it's 22 points to 18. Melbourne have possession. 
The Tigers are going for a much smaller lineup out there at the moment. Sibley on the court, really, with three guards and two forwards out there, with Gideon Sibley in the forward spots, Copeland, Gaze, and Whitehead also on the floor. So a small lineup out there at the moment for the Tigers. Almost a steal by the Tigers. Magic win it back. Graham underneath to Long John, who jams it in for two. Well, he didn't really leap all that high off the ground. Didn't grab. need to. No, he doesn't need to, but uh, that certainly will build up Big John's confidence. Gaze for two. Whitehead does well to keep it in, but throws to Rose. Rose takes on Copeland. No, he doesn't. Gives it to Graham. Graham back to Dawes. And John Dawes just looks up and plonks it in the bucket for two more. Oh, it really is a, a, a high intensity out there for both teams. The Tigers are, are just so ruthless in their defense. They're scrapping all the loose balls. And, of course, means that the Magic can get away on that break as they have. And again, we see them coming down with Rose leading the way. Parkinson for three. Fouls on Dorge. Well, that situation, Parkinson looked inside at Dorge. Really should have thrown the ball into him because Dorge was free. Even if his man had gone there, I'm sure Dorge would have kicked it back out. So maybe a, maybe the wrong option then for Parky, and then of course George picked that foul up over the top of Robert Sibley. Well, tell you what, I was a bit uh, dubious about George coming back this year, such a big man and such a serious knee operation, but he looks pretty good, doesn't he? He does, and he has built up a little, I think. He has, He's yeah. upper body, he's certainly been on the weight, and that's just going to make him even harder to guard. He's certainly a lot bigger around those shoulders, and there he is. Again, using his height to advantage. Graham to Rose. No, doesn't drop. No foul call. Oh, I think that was good refereeing. I, there may have been some contact, but it certainly didn't make him miss the basket. And that's the sort of game I want to see. It's a very tough game out there. Ray Gordon and Tony Ronaldson going at it off the ball. The referees have got their hands full tonight. Sibley to Copeland. Rebound to Rose. There's the clock on your screen, just over half a minute, and Copeland fouls. Well, really, Magic players all took off. Look, Robert Rose standing down there in, in, his, in the Melbourne Tigers' half of the court, and he was double-teamed, but you can see here that Copeland really did reach across Robert Rose then and, and did cause some contact. He wasn't happy about it, but Eddie Crouch was right on the spot. So Robert Rose at the line. Season average of 19 points. It's hectic. It's so hectic out there at the moment. It's hard to keep up with what's going on. Andrew Gaze is currently sitting out. And you, you, know, you rarely see Andrew have a rest in the first quarter of any game. But Lindsay Gaze understands that it's going to be a tough game tonight. It's going to go down the wire. And he wants his guns ready to come back in fresh. So the Magic lead by 10. What a big advantage. They were down by six at one stage. Last shot of the quarter to Melbourne. Who will they go to? Gaze isn't out there. Will it be Whitehead? No, it's Gordon. Misses. Ronaldson grabs the ball. Graham, the Hail Mary, scatters the scallywags. <laughs> And at quarter time here at Flinders Park, before a huge crowd, it's the Magic 28 leading the Tigers 18. Almost ready for a start in the second quarter here at Flinders Park before a packed house. Great atmosphere. Andrew Gaze, 10 points in that first quarter. And if uh, referee Mal Cooper will kindly step aside, no, he won't. We can just see that Andrew Gaze has got a little knee bandage on. Nothing too much. We're used to Andrew putting on some sort of bandage every game we see him play, but perhaps just a little bit of cartilage problem for Andrew Gaze. We're away in the second quarter and the magic... At one stage, trailed by six, now lead by 10. 28 points to 18. Darren Perry into the game. There's Graham. He had a wonderful first quarter, 10 points. Best I've seen him play this year. Both coaches already, Steve, have used eight players. 
and that's quite a number to use and, and, and it's an advantage that both coaches have that they have such deep benches in particular magic they really do go a long way down the bench and with the road double as, they, as we've said that they have this weekend they will need every player to perform yes i'm sure all the boys are watching over there in western australia dr hurley and Andrew Vlahov and Scott Fisher, good evening gentlemen, if you're watching, I'm sure you are. And, and I hope they're, uh, and I'm sure they're hoping that there's an all-in brawl and, and, and half the magic get uh, rubbed out for a week. But I don't think that'll happen as Rose comes away from a rebound again. Look at him working on Copeland in the left hand, kicks it back to Ronaldson. And Perry with the chance to settle things down. Well, the Magic and the Perth Wildcats have been the two outstanding teams so far, but you see Perry shoot for three. Yeah, but neither of them wish to play the Tigers. There's a foul yeah. on Brad Key. But I guess one criticism of Perth is they're very weak on the bench, aren't yeah. they? Well, as these two teams, as we've been saying, have their depth, the, the, the Wildcats certainly don't, and I think certainly not admit. But there is no team, they don't want to play the Tigers in the finals because the Tigers are really the wild card. They have got so much talent. They had a terrible start this season as it was well publicised. But now they are such a danger team. But they are their own worst enemies. As we saw two weeks ago, they went out and got beaten by Sydney. Of course, now there's all the turmoil in Sydney with the Ken McClary uh, situation where Ken's walked out of the club. And uh, just two weeks ago, they were on a high because they'd knocked off the Tigers at home. 31 points to 18. Magic doing it comfortably by 13 points. Big lead for the early part of the game. going to be a Melbourne ball from the side. There's Copeland. He's had a knee injury for most of the year. Been just a tad bit disappointing compared to his fantastic debut season last year. He has struggled a little this year. He doesn't seem to be as explosive as he was last season. And I certainly think that has to be attributed to that knee injury. And he's just not getting the roll as we saw there. Maybe last year that one would have dropped. This season it doesn't. Opportunity to redeem himself from the free throw line. And certainly the Tigers need this trailing at the moment by 13. <laughs> 31 points to 20. Magic lead by 11. Early in the piece in this second quarter at Flinders Park. Uh, the great thing about the Magic, Steve, and we've seen quite a bit of them over the last season and a bit. Oh, a big check by David Simmons. Just threw Tony Ronaldson shot out of there. And that should be a lifter for the Tigers. The big thing about the Magic is that they just grind teams down. They just chip away and work hard on it. And we saw them with the, against the Hawks on Sunday. You know, it really took until the third quarter before they got on top. And they look as though they have a comfortable victory as Renard Copeland hits his second three-pointer for the evening. And that certainly will bring a smile to Coach Lindsay Gay's face. And the margin's back to eight points after it got out to 13. There's Rose, Simmons standing in the way. Pass to Graham. Clever basket almost, but Bruce Bolden's there to finish off Graham's good work. It really does make you look good when you've got a guy like Bolden just hanging around the hoop like that, just sticking back your missed shots. Copeland again. And he's got the hot hand in the second quarter. He's Absolutely. up to 10 points. That's the old one, Art Cope. A little one-on-one -on -one move just to dribble to the left and then up strong. He really jumped over the top of Robert Rose there. Good defensive work from the Tigers. Yeah, Leonard is really pumped up this, tonight. He's uh, looking to get hold of that ball. Bolin runs into Bradkey. They better hurry the Magic. Five seconds left on the shot clock. This has got to go up. Perry. No. Chance for the Tigers. Gay steams down the court. Got three against him. Turns over the ball. Now the Magic have got the numbers. Rose to Bolin. Shoots. Misses. Lost opportunity for South East Melbourne. Should have done better. Now, yeah, there's some pretty heavy contact there. Bruce Bolin really bounced off Bradkey. He was expecting to get the foul. And when he had to take the shot, he, <laughs> I don't think he was ready for it. As we see Copeland again knock one down. And he really does have that hot hand. Lennard is on fire. He's up to 12 points. Game high scorer so far. 
Darren Perry takes a rest for the Magic, and uh, you know, really, Darren's a little bit frustrated at the moment. He suffered a little thigh injury, upper thigh injury during the week at practice. He really is itching to get some minutes out there, but Brian Gorgian just nurses these guys along as we see a turnover against the Magic as Darren Lucas throws that one out of court. Uncharacteristic, aristically, I must say. Darren Perry really just, just wants to play basketball at the moment, and Brian Gorgian's holding him back, doesn't want to rush him into the ball game too quickly. So just when the Magic looked like... Uh, Steaming away all of a sudden as the Tigers fighting back and looking the better side. Even though they trail by six at the moment. Drankey setting a couple of big screens. There's Copeland's got the hot hand in this quarter. Off the ball, Ronaldson and Branky go at it. branky has got the ball. Simmons. Gaze for three. Sibley tries to tip it in. Branky eventually. Puts it in for Melbourne. Well, excellent rebounding by both Robert Sibley and Mark Bradkey there. That was team rebounding. They were both there. Bradkey was there to finish and clean it up. But Robert Sibley did a good job to keep the ball alive. Just four points the margin. As I said, the Magic led by 13 in this quarter. Just have a look at this Tigers defense. It's a man-to-man -man defense, but they're switching wherever they can. And that's exactly what can happen when you do play that switching man-to-man -man defense. You get lost, someone gets free under the basket, and they get an easy hoop. Good assist from Graham to Rose. At the other end, now Simmons tries to reply, can't. Bolan wins the ball back for South East Melbourne. It might be time for Magic just to take a little bit of air out of the ball. That is slow the game down, get into that half-court offense and set some, some plays up rather than get into this end-to-end -end stuff. So at the moment, they're just running wind sprints and the, and the Tigers are getting an opportunity to get back in the ball game. Gaze again on the break. Magic just looking a little flat-footed and maybe tired at the moment. Thirty-five, thirty-one. George gets ready to come back on for South East Melbourne. Darren Lucas on the drive draws the foul. It's Copeland. Oh, Two shots for Darren Lucas. That's third personal foul for Leonard Copeland. Dave Simmons also with three fouls for Melbourne, while Bruce Bolden has three fouls for South East Melbourne Magic. So a few stars in foul trouble at the moment. I, think I might have said earlier about the pace of this game. It really is taking a lot out of these guys. I know Tigers had a week off last weekend, so they may you know, be lacking a run, but players of both teams look like they need to cash their breath at the moment. It is at a hectic pace. Magic by six. Mark Bradkey is just being used as a battering ram in there. He's just setting these big screens and guys are just bouncing off him. Rose eventually wins the ball for South East Melbourne. Graham to the left. That's where he goes. 12 points in the game to David Graham. It's 39-31. Magic by eight. What a battle. Bradkey against Dawes. That'll be a foul on John Dorge, that one, number 33. Another aggressive move by Mark Bradkin. We see Dorge just pushing off a little there. There was Tony Ronaldson with the help, but it was a little late. The foul was a lot earlier than that. Bradkey, nice move. That's a sweet move then by Mark Bradkey. Showed Tony Ron uh, showed, I should say, John Dorge the ball. Brought it back down, then went up with a little underhand shot. Dorge will get something back here. But Simmons again comes from the weak side and just threw that shot away. Two big blocks by David Simmons. Magnificent block from David Simmons. Dorge thought he had an easy two points. There's the big hand from Simmons. Gaze for three. Rebound Lucas quickly to Graham. Copeland won't be able to do anything because he's got oh, three he's fouls. Just absolutely on fire. Who is this man? David Graham. It's, it's the new David Graham. He's up to 12. 14 points, I should say. Here's yet another foul on John Dorch. As the game is just so quick, it's up and down the floor. And that's three personals on John Dorch. Here's this big block from Simmons. Look at that easy two points, John Dorch thought. And then the big hand from Dave Simmons just came from nowhere. And it's just great help just great help defense he came from that weak side he was out of position and that's the you know great team defense by david simmons and mark Bradkey 
up the other end. It's three or four from the free throw line at the moment, so he really has improved that free throw shooting. And Dean, you're dead right about the pace of this game. I haven't seen players at this time of the game huffing and puffing so much. Oh, absolutely. And you just got to look at it, really. Andrew Gaze at the moment, 0 for 4 from the three-point line as the Tigers are 2 for 9. They're really getting nothing from their perimeter game at all. It's all attacking the basket stuff, and that's the, the fast break basketball. Really makes it spectacular stuff. Ronaldson under pressure. Oh, makes it. Foot on the line. It's only worth two, but he'll take them. 43-35. Magic by eight. Bradkey having a good quarter. Oh, he's showing some good footwork too. Well, I'd like to have another look at that footwork because I, I'm just not sure whether it was legal, but the three referees out there said it was. No one seems to be complaining. So we'll put that down to a terrific move by Mark Bradkey. Tigers have definitely come out with a game plan. There's a nice stepping again this time by Lucas. Come out with a game plan to run the ball at Magic. They are pushing the ball up the floor every opportunity. And look at Bradkey steaming down the court. And look at Andrew Gaze hobbling down the court. He really doesn't look like he's fit. That knee could be giving him some more trouble than we thought. And here you see this uh, bucket from Bradkey. Was it a travel, Mr. Templeton? No, that's quite legal. My mistake. I'm sorry, Mark, if I... Uh might have thought that you'd travel and uh, John Dorge while we're looking at that replay has just brought up his fourth personal foul so long John Dorge is in big foul trouble and looking at his face I think he knows it well, it's an opportunity you know, for John to get into the game Brian Gorgian's lucky tonight I suppose he has both big players there Bolden and Dorge so he can uh, swing Bolden back into the game looks like he's getting ready to come in but he too has three personals so uh, both these big players are in a little bit of foul trouble. Mark Brake is doing a fine job out there for the Tigers. Parkinson. Oof. Try to give it to Ronaldson. Rose cleans up. And the consummate professional knocks down two more points. 47-39. Rose has snuck up the 10 points. He has his four assists, four steals, and five rebounds. So uh, another classic game coming along by the quiet assassin. Could have a quadruple double coming up. Rose again, will he take on Gaze? No, he goes to Parkinson. Parkinson, up goes the shot, and a foul is called, and the Tigers can't believe it. Well, that's a foul on Warwick Getty, and you know, again, I just wonder if Parky needed to take the ball into the forest, but he, he drew the foul. Looked like Warwick Getty got piece of the ball at the first time, but then he came down and definitely got the wrist of uh, Andrew Parkinson. There was little doubt about that. Maybe a little unfortunate, but I think the foul was there. Parkinson, an 83% free throw shooter, so he takes every advantage when he gets to that line. Really misses. 49-39, Magic out by 10. Copeland misses, rebound Bolden. Thought about the pass, changed his mind. Now Lucas has got the ball. Goes to Rose, drops the two and draws the foul. Oh, what a great pass by Darren Lucas. A no-look pass. Just caught Rose in the corner of his eye that he was open under the basket and ripped in a chest pass. It really went like a bullet. And there was little opportunity for the Tigers to guard that one. And a timeout called by the South East Melbourne Magic. They're doing it nicely. They lead the Tigers by 12 points, 51 to 39. Three minutes, 34 seconds left in the second quarter of Flinders Park. Huge crowd at the moment. The Magic have a huge lead, really. This uh, standard of game. It's 51-39 and 12 points is a very ha handy advantage at this stage of proceedings. And Rose has a chance to increase that lead. And he does. So it's 52 points to 39. Tigers got back to within four in this second quarter. The Magic have steamed away again. Oh, gets down to defence and at the moment you know, 52 points 
There's too many points for the Tigers to give up. They can't afford to do that. And they really have to start to try and put the screws on the Magic in defense. Bradkey again goes to who couldn't score. That'll be a foul on Mark Bradkey as he came over the top of Bolden. And Bradkey up to three personal fouls. So the three big men in this game all in a little bit of foul trouble in the first half. Dorge and Bolden from the Magic. Bolden with three, Dorge with four personals. And Bradkey with three fouls. And Simmons also with three fouls for the Tigers. There is a lot of fouls, but you couldn't say by any means that the match has been over refereed, can you? It's, they've all been there. It's been so intense, yeah. the game. I think to this point in time, you have to say the refereeing's been very good. There's two guys just itching to get out there and play at the moment, Darren Perry and John Dodge. Darren Perry in particular looks so eager to get out in the court. He's like a little kid, doesn't he? He wants to get out and play. Gaze has the knee bandage off now. Bradke the lob pass to Simmons. Two badly needed points for the Tigers. That's the first basket for David Simmons tonight. And now he really has to start to pick up that scoring. He's a 21 point career scorer. He's only averaging around 12 this season. Beautiful pass, bounce pass inside from Bruce Bolton to Ronaldson. It really was a super pass from the big fella. Simmons, turnover, bowling, clever pass to Rose, Whitehead there, Rose misses, but guess who's there to finish off the work, Bruce Boland, good old-fashioned backing up. Do we count that as an assist for, for Robert Rose? Oh, I guess you could. <laughs> what does our statistician say? Might be a little bit generous. I should say. No, he says no, no assist. <laughs> oh, yeah, but you couldn't believe these guys, eh? Uh, there's little doubt that Rose didn't try and make that basket. An interesting substitution by Brian Gorgian of the Magic. Rookie Lee Waitson comes into the game and Bruce Bolden goes for a rest. And uh, I don't think Bruce is all that impressed going out of the game at this stage. However, there's no doubt that his coach is concerned about the foul count at the moment. Lucas off the foot of Brecky and uh, Lee Waitson's a 21-year-old rookie. Not bad, they six foot nine and a bit quite handy yeah, he's got plenty of good size about him and he moves well a left-hander pretty unusual in basketball circles moves pretty well Tony Ronaldson this time on the move to the hoop Bradkey cleans up Gaze takes on Lucas and wins the battle Lucas is called for holding you can see just a little bit of a different approach from Andrew Gaze to how he's playing against Darren Lucas tonight's game rather than catch the ball and then try and uh, and work from a stationary position he's getting the ball on the run and Darren's having to adjust his defense as he's running backwards very difficult for him to do good play by Gaze putting the pressure back onto Darren Lucas Fifty-eight. 43, Magic lead by 15 points. Over one and a half minutes remaining in the second quarter. And Gaze up to 14 points, and Copeland and Bradkey with 12 apiece. But other than that, Simmons has two and Sibley three, and they're the only scorers that the Tigers have. So really a three-pronged attack by the Tigers so far tonight. Ronaldson wins that battle, and a foul is called. Is it on Bradkey or Sibley? I'd say it would be Bradkey. Zero. It is, and Mark just gets told to close his mouth, and that's his fourth personal. And Bradkey immediately is a rip from the action by Coach Lindsay Gaze. Well, all these early fouls on the big players from both teams has made the coaches have to adjust, and you can see what they've done. We saw Lee Wadeson come in for Magic. Now Nick Tanner, who rarely sees some court time for the Tigers, has come into the game in the first half. And that's been brought about, of course, because of the foul situation that has arisen. And that is going to have an effect down the stretch in this game, there's no doubt about it. Which way it'll go, who knows. At the moment, Magic is sitting pretty with a 17-point lead. But the Tigers are renowned for getting back into the ball game very quickly. Whitehead, there's Giddy. Back to Gaze. Back pedals. 
Now Gaze again. She's under pressure. Well, Whitehead. Well, at the moment, Magic can key on, and there's one of them, can key on the two scorers out there for the Tigers, and that is Whitehead and Gaze. That time, Stephen Whitehead hit a very tough basket, but they can key their defense around those two guys. It makes it a little bit easier for them. Ruddleson. Parkinson. Shoots. 62-45, again the margin out to 17 points. This is a big scoring half by the Magic, 62 points. I think I mentioned earlier about how the Tigers have to pick up that defensive effort. They've given away far too many points. Another great bucket under pressure from Whitehead. <laughs> Dean Templeton shaking his head. Don't know how that one dropped in. No, that's in. That is not in any coaching manual. Not that I've ever read any. Big screen set by Waits and on Giddy off the ball. Rose, last shot of the quarter. Waitson. Three second violation. Lee Waitson stood in the key. So the Tigers have 1.8 seconds left in this half to score. Whitehead throws up the shot. And close but not close enough. So at half time here at Flinders Park. Fantastic half of action. And it's the South East yeah, Melbourne Henry Magic, 62 Henry points, Henry leading the Tigers, 47. He's Ali Well, he took it, yes! Crawford's got Utah to beat oh. Wicks the jam. It's the guy. It's got you top to beat oh. next to jam. It's the guy. time here at Flinders Park and the South East Melbourne Magic doing it very nicely thank you at the main break 62 to 47 and have a look at that field goal percentage of the Magic 57 percent they have not connected from the three-point line from just two attempts but they've been getting the ball up the court very quickly they've been uh, running that transition game that we speak about so often that is they've been getting from defense to offense very quickly and they've got 57% from the free uh, from the field goal percentage, which is of course means they're getting a lot of lanes. No three pointers against 20% for the Tigers, and rebounding 23 to 17. Again, the Magic have the edge. Turnovers really, uh, neither team having major problems in that area. But basically, the Magic are getting the ball up the up the court very quickly, and are able to score easily with lanes at this stage. For the Tigers, Steve, they're going to have to really pick up their defensive intensity, put some pressure on the Magic, and it's a big task, and try and just crawl, crawl their way back into this game. There's Bruce Boland, 13 points at halftime. He has to his name, Does so does Rose. Graham's got 14 for the Magic, Ronaldson 10. Well, for the Tigers, Gaze 14, Copeland and Bradkey 12. But apart from that for the Tigers, it falls away dramatically. Dave Simmons, just two points next to his name. And Tigers have first possession in this third quarter. Gaze, double teamed, and the foul is on Darren Lucas. That'll be his third personal foul. Lucas hates the call, but then again, I've never seen him like one. And 
Was it a foul or wasn't it well, a foul? Well, I, I don't believe he was called for that second phase that you saw there because Andrew really just put the ball up into his hand. It was that first contact that he made where he came in with his chest and there was contact there. Referees deemed that it was serious enough to call the foul. And that's why Andrew Gaze is on the free throw line. Now he moves up to 16 points and it makes him the high man for the game, a position that is all too familiar for Andrew Gaze. But the Tigers must get some other support around Gaze. And this is the end where they are now, the defensive end, where they have to get back into this ball game. They cannot allow the Magic to score as easily as they did in the first half. Bolden runs into Simmons at Bradkey. It's a Magic ball from the side. Here we go. 10 second warning, buzz on the shot clock. There's Rose, who go to the line for two shots. Again, Rose finding himself free on the baseline, just coming around a screen. It was just a, a little bit of space that he found, but it was enough for him to get the ball and then, of course, to draw the foul against Robert Sibley. That's Sibley's first personal for the evening but it just highlights the problems that the Tigers are having in guarding the, uh, the Magic. I'm sounding like a broken record, but it doesn't really matter how many points the Tigers shoot now. It's up the other end where they've got to try and put the stoppers on the opposition. Oh, yeah. 64 to 49. 15 points a difference. Sibley, two points. He's been quite on the scorecard also. He's got a big task out there at the moment. He's guarding Robert Rose, and that's uh, a hard job for Robert Sibley to do so far away from the basket. Darren Lucas couldn't connect, and Gaze is away with the ball. He's an opportunity for the Tigers on the break. Copeland. Bradkey, the height. Still can't put it in. It's a magic ball. Great muscle underneath the basket. Some Bradkey heavy stuff. Really using his weight. Uh, there was some heavy stuff there. There was a lot of contact. But good refereeing because it was, uh, you know, all players were going for the ball. I don't think anybody was really disadvantaged by the contact. And I believe that's good refereeing. There was nothing malicious in there. Just good hard uh, basketball. Was Graham. Thought about the shot. Now it goes to Ronaldson. Oh, that's a classic play. Good, good pass in there by David Graham. Looked at the hoop, saw that he was guarded. Tony Ronaldson had his man behind him. And Ronaldson really has come along in leaps and bounds this season. And he's so dangerous inside, as well as having that perimeter threat as well. Gays to Simmons. Looking for Bradkey. There he is. Misses. Rebound Robert Rose. Quickly away for the Magic. Ronaldson. Fake the three. Copeland tries to steal it. Can't. Graham, and that's a travel, Mr. Graham, and the Magic turned the ball over. And David Graham gave the fake, but lifted that pivot foot before he put the ball to the ground, and as a consequence, did travel. Magic looking very dangerous at the moment at both ends of the floor. They really have a lot of composure out there. As I said earlier, they execute their offense extremely well, and their defense is uh, very well organized. Copeland. He's up to 14 points. 66 to 53. Oh, great hand great by Gaze. Steal by Gaze. Oh, Lucas blocks the shot. Oh, sensational stuff from Lucas. No foul, Paul. Oh, there was no foul there. That was just a super play by Darren Lucas. All ball on this one. Look at that. That's as clean as a whistle. And won't Darren Lucas love that one, as his Magic teammates did? Well, I, don't, I have no doubt the most surprised person in the stadium about that one was Andrew Gaze. He had no idea that Lucas was going to come from behind and do that. What a great play by Lucas. He really is a terrier, isn't he? Sensational stuff. Quarter saw that, and we all put down two points next to Andrew Gaze's name. But they rub it off. Oh, I think you can leave it there because I'm pretty sure he'll score again a little later. How about now? <laughs> oh, you can't keep the man down. 18 points to Gaze. 55 for the Tigers, 66 for the Magic. So you know, they've made four points up this half already. Just chipping away. 
So if they keep this going, then it will get back into a close ball game. Shit! What about that? Gaze to Copeland. Another block from Lucas. Listen to the crowd. I thought for sure Gaze was going to give the little alley-oop pass to Copeland then. Decided to go all the way himself. Thought to himself, hey, this couldn't happen twice in a row. Lucas again came up and made that big play. Magic screaming for a travel call. In fact, it is called. Travel called on Mark Bradkey. I don't know about you, but I'm having trouble hearing myself. <laughs> the noise is just... Incredible at the moment from supporters from both sides. Well, there's a good split here. You know, I think that there's probably more Tigers fans. Another turnover against the Magic. It's getting a little sloppy in offense. Eight turnovers against Magic to this stage, and another opportunity for the Tigers to get that margin below that crucial 10 point, the double figures. Here's Copeland. Oh, he's just the stripped steal. it of him. Oh. Oh. He misses, no foul call, but Darren Lucas is there to put it in and steals the ball. Rose, back to Lucas, back to Rose, and a foul. Oh, the magic. What a team they are. Great combination, great teamwork between Lucas and Rose. And, well, the Tigers, it was a bad mistake, but you've just got to be on your toes all the time when you play South East Melbourne. There's the replay. Lucas backpedals, taps it to Rose. Copeland was standing there, so he gave it to Lucas. Lucas says, no, you have it back. And there's the foul. Well, it was a case where the Tigers all, all day, or I should say all evening, they've been trying to get the ball in as quickly as they possibly could. Leonard Copeland grabbed the ball, threw it in the court. Darren Lucas was there to intercept it. And that uh, team play by the Magic has just been highlighted on a number of occasions where a player has gone in on a breakaway lane, missed it, but then one of his teammates has been there to put the ball back in the hole. So really, Magic are combining extremely well out there. Tigers just struggling a little at the moment. Back out to 15 points when we're just talking about Tigers getting back in the ball game. Simmons. Oh, good two points from Dave Simmons. That's his fourth point for the game, so he's been very quiet score-wise. 70 to 57. Rose to Lucas. Had a great third quarter as Darren Lucas. Two big blocks on Andrew Gaze. Ronaldson gets his own rebound. Second time lucky for Tony Williams. Uh, it was a terrific pass inside then by David Gray. And he threw the ball to Tony Ronaldson's free hand away from the defense. Was pinpointed, hit him right in the hand. And gave Ronaldson the opportunity to roll on his man and get that free shot. Gaze simply sets the screen. Oh, good one too from Gaze to Sibley. Can't drop it in. And the big defensive rebound from Bruce Bolan. On the fast break to Lucas, to Graham. Graham for two, misses. Good work from Robert Sibley. Gaze drives, two points. The pace is a cracker. It certainly is, there's no doubt about that. And I just keep thinking that the Tigers look as though they're going to get back into it. I can't help but feeling that their fitness is just a little bit off at the moment. You know, that one week's rest that they had might have been a problem for them. That time's a huge play by Tony Ronalds and a foul on David Simmons. And somehow the ball went in the basket and yet another three-point opportunity for the Magic. David Simmons is just flabbergasted over that one. How did he get that basket? No doubt about the foul, but somehow Ronaldson was able to squeeze that one in. And he was pretty happy about that. And Art Copeland taking another rest. Stephen Whitehead comes into the game for the Tigers. Copeland has spent quite a bit of time on the bench, has 14 points. It'll be necessary for him to be out there if they're to get themselves back into this game. Sibley has the basketball for the Tigers. There's Simmons to Gaze. Oh, good defensive hustle from Lucas. Magic have got the numbers. Goes to Parkinson. No foul call. Bowler drops it in and draws the foul. 
And again, Darren Lucas, sensational defensive work. That's three huge plays by Lucas in this quarter already. Blo two blocks on Gaze, and he stripped Gaze of the ball on that one. And that really was a huge play. We'll go to a break. Five minutes, 34 remaining third quarter. Magic 77, Tigers 59. Stern-looking Andrew Gaze, and why not? Because they're 18 points down. Darren Lucas with a smile on his face. He's had three big defensive plays this quarter. And the Tigers do appear to be in a little bit of trouble. They trail 59 to 77. Well, just as they start to get themselves back in the ball game, and they look as though they're going to come good, we see Lucas come up with a big play, and it just turns the whole you know, structure of the game around. Now we have you know Bolden down there again finishing off a three-point play and, and now the Tigers are looking at a, a 19 point deficit. I mean yeah, gee whiz it's, it's tough for them to keep coming back all the time and Magic have just got so many troops they just keep coming up at you. Simmons, Sibley, there's guys. Guess who snapping at the heels. Whitehead trying to shake Parkinson free. He's having trouble doing so eventually does. Now he gives it to Simmons. Giddy. Oh, it's just a confusion out there at the moment for the Tigers. They're not running their patterns. They're not running their plays because the magic pressure is pushing them out of it. I'd like to see them go to Whitehead a little bit more now. He's got Andrew Parkinson on him at the moment. He can push the ball. There's the, the turnover count, 13 to 8, and uh, really the Tigers a little bit too high. We credit that to some good defense by Magic. Having said that, Bruce Bolden turns the ball over for Magic. Sibley. Two badly needed points for the Melbourne Tigers. Sibley has seven points in the game. 78-61. There's Rose. Giddy trying to play some defence. Lucas off the ball. Sibley and Bolden going at it. Parkinson gives it to Ronaldson. Fakes the three. Now drives for two. Misses. Bolden the rebound. Falls into the hands of Rose. And always there's a magic person there to back up a teammate. What a great effort by Bolden. He really cleared some space in the middle of the keyway there for him. He just makes such a, a wide body out there and he, he, he's so strong with his upper body. that it, you know, he, He's just so tough rebounding. Really, the Tigers have got to get Mark Bradkey back out on the floor even though he is in foul trouble to try and get some rebounding going. Fouls on Rose. Basket won't count. Oh, wow. There's a replay. Just a cheap little... Reach in from behind. Didn't overly concern Robert Rose too much. He's uh, happy to concede the foul. Magic by 19. Four minutes left in the third quarter here at Flinders Park. Packed house in the local derby. The grand final replay. Giddy. Is it John George back on the floor for Magic as Tony Ronaldson has a well-earned rest. And again, we must say that you know, Gorgian rotating his troops very well. And in light of the, bit, uh, the uh, lead that they have at the moment as Bolton puts down another two, he'll be doing that more and more as the evening goes on in order to keep these guys fresh with a big one against Perth in Perth tomorrow night. And Bruce Bolton with 13 rebounds already in the game. Simply knocks down two more. And uh, 18 points and 13 rebounds from Bruce Bolton. Still with 3.21 left in the third quarter is an unbelievable night's work by anyone's standards. He could sit down now and be happy. Oh, great pass. That is an unbelievable pass by Robert Rose. Went like a frozen rope and hit Darren Lucas, who was all alone under the basket. A sensational pass by Rob Rose. It's out to 21, the margin. Simmons slaps it back out to Giddy. Now Whitehead sets himself for three. Slapped away by George. 
it'll be a Tigers ball. Correct call from the referees. Well, that's not a bad shot for the uh, for the Tigers to take with Stephen White Whitehead outside that three-point line. Two of 11. It's not a good percentage, but right now they need three, so they've got to go up. There's another one that goes up. They'll start to hit them soon. Giddy can't connect on the stick back, but Sibley cleans up. Gaze again for three. Oh, it's just not Andrew's night tonight. Simmons can't put it back. Gaze and Rose clash. Magic with the ball again. Parkinson to Bolden. Bolden the jump shot. He misses. Sibley the rebound. There's Gaze with the ball. But Magic have got four men back compared to no Tigers. And it's a charging foul. And that's why no support for Andrew Gaze. Four Magic players got back, and Gaze really had... There was nothing else that Gaze could do, was there? Uh, it's a good call, and you can see in that great shot there, you can see the three, four Tigers players looking, standing and watching as Gaze takes the ball down the keyway. And really, good defence by Magic, but you're quite right, there's the difference in the game as Bruce Bolden sits down for a rest. Magic are always there to back their teammates up, either end of the floor. Tigers at the moment, just a little bit individual, but they're under a lot of pressure out there. This time Bradkey on the block on Lucas. Good block from Bradkey. Now Whitehead. They need some points in a hurry to the Tigers. Sibley. Dawes the big rebound. And I think the foul's on Andrew Gaze. It is. For personal on Andrew Gaze. And substitution, Ray Gordon in for Melbourne. As Gay sits down, there's the foul. And I don't, don't know about you at the moment, Dean, but I'm pretty disappointed with Melbourne's performance tonight so far. Oh, well, I am in the context that I was looking forward to a really close game and, and uh, to be exciting, but I have to say that you know you can't take a lot away from from the Magic. I mean, the Tigers are out there doing their best, but really, Magic are the form team of the league. This will be their eighth victory in a, victory in a row if we assume that they're going to win this one. And, uh, you know, they're tough. They've got so many players. George has just come back in. I was just about to comment. You know, he really has put on a lot of pounds on that upper body. His shoulders are far bigger than they ever have been. And that has been a weakness in his game as he used to get the ball stripped out of his hands. Hey, he's big and tough now. He's six foot eleven, and he's probably weighing up around the 20 stone mark in the old language. I'm sorry, I don't know what that is in kilos. Parkinson. Shoots. Doesn't go. Rebound to Whitehead. And the foul will be on Parkinson. That seemed to be a pretty late call by referee Mel Cooper. From where I sat, and I'm a long way from the action, it looked as though there was a hand in there a lot earlier than that. You might see it here, there, I thought the foul was. He waited until it went around, and then he, in fact, called that foul on Andrew Parkinson. Either way, the result's the same. Gordon on the court now for the Tigers against Perry. Sibley, there's Bradkey. Hasn't had a lot of play in the third quarter. That's a nice move from Mark Bradkey. That's a terrific move to, for the big guy to go left like that and, and shoot a little left-hand hook shot. I'd love to see him do it a little bit more. Double team it's there by the Tigers as Darren Brunelli gets his arm totally ripped off. They're going to get the ball back here. Lee Crouch is coming across to speak to Mel Cooper. He'll say that. I'm 100% the other way. Didn't touch. Well, that's a big call. There's no doubt that you know, Mel Cooper, from where he was, felt that there was a hand on the ball because the way the ball came off. Crouch said there was no hand on the ball, but I tell you, there was a hand on his arm because he ripped up Darren Perry's arm off. Good fortune to the Tigers. 65 to 84. Magic lead by 19. Bradkey weaving his way closer to the basket. Good rebound from Giddy. And the foul is called. And I reckon it's been John Dawes called again, and that means it'll be his fifth personal foul. And it is. So one more foul and John Dawes is out of the game. Well, he's certainly making his presence foul felt out there. He has obviously had a lot of court times on his third game back. Has four points, three rebounds, and his biggest stat for the evening is five personal fouls. Well, he probably figures that I'm out there for a total of about 10 minutes, otherwise we'll get the foul. Uh, oh, that's not a bad theory. There's the coaching staff of the Tigers sitting there looking a bit forlorn. 
Lindsay Gaze and he's in a, his assistant coach Alan Westover and really uh, there's not much they can do at this stage of the game still a quarter to go but uh, Magic at the moment really are playing at a different level than the Tigers there's Perry good steal from Giddy clever work, clever work from Giddy great ball control so another chance for Melbourne before the three-quarter time buzzer. They'll get the last shot in. And they don't want this to go to Bradke or Whitehead. Giddy's the man who shoots. No. That's why they didn't want it to go to Giddy. So three-quarter time. It's the South East Melbourne Magic leading by 17 points. They're in front of the Tigers, 84 to 67. Fourteen thousand three hundred and seventy three people here tonight at Flinders Park for the local derby between the two grand finalists from last year, the South East Moa Magic and the Melbourne Tigers. And at the moment, well, if you're a Tigers fan, you'd be disappointed because they're copping a 17 point drubbing at the moment, 84 to 67. And uh, really, it'd be hard to see the Tigers getting up. Well, they here. haven't gone home yet, but <laughs> maybe a few of them. There's Ross Oakley. The Supremo of the Australian Football League. Here watching the action tonight. Probably the most powerful administrator in Australian sport. Probably get a few arguments from some rugby league fans, but I think that would be a fair comment. Rose wasn't ready for the pass from Graham. And the Magic turned the ball over. So not a good start for them to this final quarter, but they do lead by 17 points. Gaze, 20 points for Melbourne. Rose, 19. Bolden, 18. Ronaldson, 17. Graham, 14 for South East Melbourne. Such a great spread of scoring for the Magic. Reggie goes strong to the hoop. And it's a foul on David Graham. And really what the Tigers need at the start of this, the final quarter, is an Andrew Gaze or a Leonard Copeland to get hot from outside that three-point line and start knocking them down. Gaze at the moment with his 20 points is 7 of 15 from the field, but 0 for 6 from the three-point line. He really needs to find his range from outside the three-point line. And if he can rack up a few quick buckets, as we have seen him do on, on a number of occasions throughout his career, you never know what might happen. Mark Bradke, I don't know where he's found that free-throw shooting, but he's 8 of 9 from the line tonight at 89%, which is way beyond his season average of 55. I think he's been getting some coaching from Andrew Gaze, so there's a fair teacher. Ruddleson drives, block from Bradkey. Here's a chance for Melbourne. Copeland gets past Lucas. Yeah, but look how quickly Magic get back in defence. Tremendous defensive uh, transition. They all got back so quickly in numbers, and then they cut out the fast break of the Tigers. Terrific defensive effort again by the Magic. Uh, Lucas, clever pass to Bolin, and he'll go to the charity stripe for an extra shot. Uh, you know, we, we probably sound as though, Steve, that we're uh, really giving so many raps to the Magic, but I have to say that I think they are playing as good as basketball as any team I've seen for a very long time. And you know, whether it's too early in the season for them to hit their peak, but they seem to have been on it for a number of weeks now. And really, they are in tremendous form. And all credit must go to their coaching staff, and Brian Gorgian in particular. He has got this team just playing so well together, and they are so well organised, that it just makes it so hard for the opposition. What do you think Adrian Hurley might be uh, thinking about at the moment, watching over in Perth? Well, you know, Adrian Hurley's got five tremendous players that he can go with, but he certainly doesn't have the depth that the uh, that the magic have so he'll be hoping for you know there might be a different sort of game plan in tomorrow's game you might not see it as up and down as such a quick tempo as gaze gets another one under the hoop as we've seen tonight where we saw the back and forth game but magic have the ability to adapt to a half court slow game or they can play that quick fast break game they really can uh, do whatever what happens Two points, or does Lucas Furlan? No, he can't this time. 
No foul call. Gay screaming for a foul. I mean, Gorgian was screaming out for a tech foul. Graham pass to Rose. Oh, stripped of the ball. Here's another chance for Gaze. Lucas almost steals the ball. Simmons to Brecky. Players on the ground everywhere. Lucas is hurt. He's okay, I think. Both Lucas and Gaze are on, lying on their backs on the court. Gaze is certainly okay. Lucas seems to be out of that knock. All of a sudden, it's now 12 points, the difference. Tigers with the ball. Pressure just changes slightly. The, you know, the game can change so quickly, in particular when this man's got the ball and he says, oh, that's a big call. A huge call by Mel Cooper. Whoa. Well, he had the best view, didn't he? Let's have a look, see if we can see it. A little difficult to see there. The call is that Andrew Gaze pushed off with his loose arm as he spun, spun around. That's a fifth personal foul. And really, with the momentum of the game just then delicately poised, that is a huge call by referee Mel Cooper. Rose misses the jam. Bolden's there to clean up. He'll go to the line for two shots. It's a fifth personal foul on Mark Bradke as he came across and chopped down on Bruce Bolton. The crowd still not happy with that result or that foul on Andrew Gaze. Offensive foul as he performed the uh, spin move. Lindsay getting in plenty. There is Lindsay Gaze, still having a little chat to Mel. So it's back out to 14, 89 to 75. Just gives them a little bit more of a cushion because really, you know, there was a chance for the Tigers to get... It's a little bit closer. And pressure would build up on Magic. Copeland. Battle for the ball. Bragby wins it for Melbourne. Good work, Mark Bragby. He's had a good game for the Tigers. You just can't lay... You know, I probably wrote the mock too early when you... In retrospect... You can't do it. I mean, they've just got too many guns out there. It's just, they're just getting a little bit closer to it, all right? They're not yet there. And that's the great thing about Magic. They have that composure, but it's not going to take much for the Tigers just to get back into this ball game. It's still a 14-point deficit. A couple of threes by Copeland or Gaze. A referee's call that goes their way. You never know what can happen. Foul by Bolin. Gaze will go to the line for two shots. And Lindsay Gaze giving a Bronx cheer to Mel Cooper. We'll have to forget about it now. And I don't think even Bruce could argue with that one. Substitution. Andrew Parkinson on for the Magic and David Graham sits down. Andrew Gaze at the free throw line. He's got 24 points next to his name. to 79 12 points magic lead the Tigers there's the clock on your screen just over eight minutes remaining Tigers haven't given up Lucas weaves his way through misses fouls on bowling that's his fifth personal foul well, that's another big call, and, and, and really it's just, uh, oh, that's a big play there. Bolden on a five personal fouls. You've got Dorge sitting on the bench on five personal, so the big man of the, of the Magic really in foul trouble now. Lucas just couldn't connect on that lay-in. Bradkey got the rebound. Bolden came from behind, slapped him on the arm. A big play here for the Tigers. They really have to score here. Maybe an understatement, but they must score in this play here. And then the pressure will just turn up a little bit more onto the southeast Melbourne Magic. That's a foul on Lucas, and he's not happy. Eddie Crouch was right on that one. Oh. And that's Lucas's fourth personal, and there's the foul.
Copeland with the basketball for Melbourne. Bradkey to Gaze. Inside to Simmons. Simmons into a wall of Magic players. Now Copeland. Rebound to Bolden. So lucky let off for South East Melbourne. Magic ball from the side. Well, that's, that's an example, I suppose, of luck or, or fortune, whatever you want to call it. Copeland just didn't get the roll. That could easily have dropped in. If it drops in, you know, the whole complexion of the game changes. But now it's Magic's opportunity. Turnover's 15 apiece, so it really... Magic have started to turn the ball over a little bit more in a lot of parts of this game. They have to settle down. Bolden has to be careful on five personals. Parkinson trying to get free for a shot. Somehow does. Gets in between the defence really far too easily. And Parkinson scores his eighth point of the evening. 93 to 79. 14 points of difference. Simmons. Copeland for three. Yes, and it drops. No, foot on the line. Rules referee Eddie Crouch. So only two points for Leonard Copeland, and that makes it 93 to 81. Parkinson to Lucas, who drives down the middle. Big block from Dave Simmons. So the Tigers not giving up. Copeland. Gaze shoots two. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here they come. And Gaze looked so much more balanced when he came off that screen. Picked the ball up and really did look good. 28 points to Gaze. And the Tigers have certainly picked up in the last quarter. And this is not the sort of scenario that Coach Brian Gorgian wanted for his magic. He would have much preferred to be going into this last quarter having the opportunity to rest his star players in light of tomorrow's game. There's a substitution. Darren Lucas goes to the bench. Darren, David Graham comes on. Most likely he'll be the man to pick up Andrew Gaze. Parkinson to Rose. Been pretty quiet in the second half as Robert Rose. Ronaldson misses the three. It'll be a Tigers ball. So perhaps everyone, including yours truly, and me, I'll admit it. Right, them off. But at 17 points, well, you, you really couldn't give them a chance. But Well, you just you live and learn. And I should know that you just can't <laughs> write off any team in basketball. And in particular, you can't write off the Tigers. Magic just collapsing back into a zone defense. And maybe that alignment threw the Tigers off a little bit as they tried to establish just what Magic was doing. And consequently, they threw the ball out of court. So a let off for the Magic. They lead by 10. They have the ball. Five minutes, 40 seconds remaining. And they need a basket just to calm down and cons consolidate their position. Parkinson has the basketball. There's Ronaldson. Inside to Bolden. Up goes Bolden. Nothing much Bradkey can do about it because he's also in foul trouble. Delay of game warning. It's a delay of game warning against South East Melbourne Magic as Bruce Bolden handled the ball after he scored the basket. If it happens again, it's an automatic technical foul to the Magic. Copeland, again, just can't get that roll. He really is stiff. But they come up with the ball again. You know, Copeland's just missing. He's not you know, really doing nothing wrong. Here we go. I'm just missing that basket. But the, the Tigers with another opportunity. There's Bradkey, Gaze. Elio pass to Simmons! Great pass, great plays. Simmons got behind the defense, seemed to be up there forever. Terrific pass from Gaze, and Simmons slammed it down. Ten points of difference yet again. Ronaldson, turnover, Copeland to Gaze. Oh, 95-87. Has it the crowd come to life now? All well, 14,373 of them is the South East Melbourne Magic. Call a timeout. It's 95 to 87. Magic lead the Tigers. <laughs>
Well, despite the fact that uh, Darren Lucas has seemingly done a good job on that man tonight, the great Andrew Gay still has 30 points. And you can't deny he's the best player in the game in Australia. You just can't keep him down. He, he's going to get his points one way or another. 55% from the field, but has not connected on a three-point shot, and that's an unusual stat for Andrew. But he still has that 30. Ronaldson looking for a score. Magic really need to get a basket here. They only have an eight-point lead. Nearly turn it over. And they're a big rebound to Leonard Copeland. And the Tigers are right back in this ball game with an opportunity to bring that score down to six or maybe five points. In this final quarter so far, the Tigers have outscored the Magic 20 points to 11. Gaze for three. Still can't drop a three-point bomb. Oh, my. Well, there's a couple of things happening. Tony Ronaldson hurt. Okay. That's it. You're right. I couldn't say it. Don't That's okay. Help. That really did look steep to me as though that came straight off Andrew Gaze's leg. I think it was pretty clear cut. In the, di in the background, you can see Ronaldson being stood on. That may be the break that the Tigers needed. Certainly, uh, you know, the call earlier against Gaze may have been unfortunate against them. It evens up in the wash. Copeland misses the three but gets another chance. So what a fight back by the Tigers. We'd all written them off. Gaze. No. Slapped out. Now another chance. Copeland. How many opportunities are they going to get at the basket? They really had three or four chances then and they didn't score. Rose. He oh, dropped the basket. I mean, I think the corner right there, that could have been the big chance yeah. for the Tigers. I might have blown it. Well, they had so many chances. You're just not going to get that many second shots, third shots, fourth shots against a team of Magic's calibre. Margin back out to ten. They need a three. They must get a three soon. Copeland loses the handle on it. Ronaldson comes up with it. Boland took Parkinson. He's got Rose. He goes That's a charge. Himself. That's a charge. Perhaps the pass might have been the better option, Dean. Well, in hindsight, I don't think there's any doubt about it. You can see Rose is pretty clear. The park is out there. He's got his eyes on the basket. There was little doubt that there was a charging foul. So Tigers live yet again. Under three minutes remaining. Pass inside to Brecky. He scores. 97-89. Magic by eight. There's the clock ticking down, just under two and a half minutes. That's an over and back call. That's good defense by Warwick Giddy. Referee deemed that Robert Rose on that spin move, in fact, went into the front court and then went back into the back court. Let's have a look at it again. You'll see it here. Into the front court. He goes back into the back court. Good call. In the meantime, Andrew Gay scores again. There's Copeland. I'm sorry, Andrew, uh, Leonard Copeland. I'm getting a bit excited myself here, Steve. Six points the difference. Rose shoots, misses. Oh, the Magic win it back. Lucky break for them. Now Parkinson for three. Misses. Boland gets the ball for the Magic. And a big foul from Bradley. Huge foul. And Boland doesn't like it. And it is on. It was a big foul from Bradkey, and Boland didn't like the treatment. And Copeland and Boland also having words. Intentional foul. Well, have a look at that foul. It really was a crude foul by Mark Bradkey. See Bruce react. Leonard Copeland comes in. Now, Bruce Boland here, he's a professional ball player. He knows he doesn't want to get thrown out of this game. He doesn't want to get thrown out. He doesn't want, want to get reported. He's just saying, hey, guys, let's settle down here. But it was a pretty crude foul by Mark Bradkey. But in the context of the game, where it's at, I can understand that. Now, that's a tough game. It's a tough foul. And, and Mark Bradkey sits down. He is out of the game with six fouls. An intentional foul has been called. It means Bruce Boland will get two free throws. Then Magic will get the ball back again from the side. So, really, it's a big penalty against the Tigers. One minute 55 remaining. 97-91, Magic in front. Listen to the crowd.
Well, the game really has had everything, hasn't it? It's uh, well, full credit to the Tigers in this final oh, quarter fantastic. for making a game of it. They're making more of a game of it. They're really still in there with a chance, the way they're going. A couple more breaks that go their way. They could well pull a miraculous victory out. Everything tells it's still magic, but who knows? Rose drives. Drops it in. Basket doesn't oh, count. Charge. for a foul. Charging foul. Oh, what a game. This is incredible. Let's have a look at that. Well, he called it for a foot. He called it. He pushed up with his foot on the drive. See if we can see it from this angle there. You see. Well, that's, oh, boy, that's pretty tough too, but... Anyway, it makes the game exciting. Gaze. Giddy. Can't put it in. Sibley's there to clean up. It's 98-93. Five points of difference. Rose to Parkinson. Parkinson shoots. Blocked by Simmons. Sibley gives it to Copeland. Copeland guards the ball. Gaze. Back to Copeland. What a basketball game. Tigers still fighting hard. Gaze for three. Oh, couldn't make it. You're ever going to make one. This could be it. Ronaldson to Rose. Big jam from Robert Rose. Magic by seven. If Gaze makes that three, I mean, he can't speak in what ifs, but if he has what, you know, it could have been anything. I'd say that's the ball game right there, but what an effort by the Tigers. Bolin. Sibley the rebound. Gives it to Gaze. Gaze, fancy footwork. Basket counts. Who go to the line for an extra shot. Yeah, there's some pressure out there, not just on the players, on the referees as well. Gaze on the spin move. Parkinson always out of position. He was called on the foul. And they've allowed that hoop. Timeout called by the coach of the Melbourne Tigers, Lindsay Gaze. It's 195, 33 seconds left on the clock. In the game it's the magic 100 tigers 95 we all wrote the tigers off at three quarter time but full credit to them they've staged a remarkable fight back in the last quarter and andrew gaze is at the free throw line this can make it a four point ball game well you heard you heard brian gorgian in that timeout saying defensively we don't want to give up any three pointers well it's going to be quite a task but at the moment Tigers are two for 16 from the three-point line, so that's not certainly a, maybe a major problem to them. An early foul in by the Tigers will send Magic to the line. Giddy on Rose. Well, it comes a, a matter of strategy now for the final 30 seconds. Both coaches will be thinking ahead of what can happen, the ramifications of each play. Well, Rose is a pretty good man to go to the line for the, uh, for the Magic. 79% for the season, 100% for the night. And he's so cool under pressure. Tigers will try and get the ball down quickly and get away an early shot. Rose misses the second. So five points of difference. We've got to get that early shot so they get another attempt. Copeland misses. Bolin fighting for the ball. Sibley back to Gaze. Gaze, Copeland for three. Bingo. Makes it. Down it goes. There's the fans. So it's 101 to 99. Who would have believed it? What an incredible game. Who would have believed it? I will never write the no, Tigers off no, again. I promise. I apologise. 
Oh dear. So a timeout call by Lindsay Gaze. There's the three from Copeland. He had to make it to give Tigers a chance. He did. So 9.8 seconds left in the game. It's the Magic 101. They have possession. They lead the Melbourne Tigers 99. Let's listen in on Lindsay Gaze. here at Flinders Park and the local derby. Magic at the foul line, they lead by two. A little bit of pressure on this gentleman, Tony Ronaldson, currently three and three from the free throw line, but I bet you those first three were a hell of a lot easier than the ones he's got to take here right now. He can really put the game beyond the Tigers if he can make them. Misses the first, and the Tigers have got the rebound. Copeland! Will they go for three? Copeland! He makes a shot! Unbelievable! Tigers! Rose from halfway! The Tigers have won! Oh, this is one of the great comebacks of all time! Look at the Tigers! Remarkable victory! The Magic can't believe it! You have witnessed the greatest comeback in NBL basketball just about of all time. This is grand theft basketball. Well, that's the sort of thing every kid who ever plays basketball dreams of. Second to go, you ice the three, you win the ball game. Leonard Copeland is an absolute hero. There's Lindsay Gaze, a phenomenal victory to the Tigers. Look at Andrew Gaze, Andrew Gaze is oh. crying. A phenomenal victory from where they were really showed a lot of heart and courage I have to say that we both wrote them off but really a tremendous last quarter by the Tigers came from nowhere look at this scene this is one of the great fight backs one of the great wins of all time they were gone for all money the Tigers <laughs> The fans giving us a bit of a razz here, Dino. I guess we deserve it. Oh, absolutely. But you just couldn't pick the Tigers when they were down by 17 or 19. Well, they've outscored the Magic. 17 points to the Magic in that last quarter to 35. Here's, here's the replay. Copeland had to make it for the... I thought they might have gone for the two, but Copeland said no, the three and nothing but net bang you got a feel for the magic i guess but oh, really no, but they, uh, oh. they just threw away a, a golden opportunity yeah, all credit to the tigers they came back they never gave in yeah we might have written them off but they certainly didn't write themselves off so we'll take a break here back in a moment to wrap up tigers winning against the magic 102 to 101. Flinders Park, we've uh, all regained our composure, sort of. The <laughs> Melbourne Tigers, grand theft basketball it was, 102, the Magic 101. The uh, Tigers outscored the Magic 35 to 17 in the final quarter. Leonard, take us through the three-pointer. Mate, um, Drury kicked it in. I looked at the clock, it was seven seconds left. Uh, come down, Robert Rose is on me, take it through my legs, and uh, right there, take it through my legs and just pull. When I let it go, it looked good. 
<laughs> look real good. Oh. <laughs> and people went, look, people are going, I'm going crazy. Everybody's going crazy. And uh, when I turn around, everybody's running at me. And there it is. We won it. I mean, I'm, I don't know what to say. Well, and I, when, you, uh, when you look at the game tonight, we write you off. A lot of people wrote you off. What were you thinking at three-quarter time? Did you give yourself a chance of victory? Um, well, they, I think they, be honest. We were down by 17. We had to make it respectable. You know, we came out and just said, "This is the fourth quarter. We're just going to leave everything on the floor." And that's what we did. And I think we surprised them a little bit because uh, things, shots were falling. I mean, and, uh, we played like the Tigers. You know, the old Tigers. Any any particular turning point in that last quarter, Leonard? For example, what about Mark Bradkey's big foul against Bruce Bold? Little altercation between Bruce and yourself there. Do you think that? You know, did the Tigers get up you know, behind you, know, you guys? We, we always get up. You know, I guess they accuse us of, uh, accuse us of being one of the physical teams. But uh, when we go to Sydney and play hard and there's all altercation, we get up. Or when we play the Magic and there's all altercation, we get up, you know. So that might have been the turning point right there, I think. Without it could be a big turning point in the season too. I think so. Uh, we're playing well right now. We're going into the – uh, hopefully we'll, we'll make the top four. And uh, if we do, then look out because it's a different ball game during the playoffs. Party tonight? Oh, mate. Are you hanging out with us? Are you with us? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not allowed to go out with you anymore. Yeah, right. we'll, we'll t congratulations. Take us through the stats okay. before you go. Okay. Um, I can't see the glare. Okay. Um, we shot 43%, and the Magic's uh, 53%. We were a little down on our shooting. Uh, field, field, free throws were about the same, 84 to 81. We were leading. Um, three, th three point shooting was down for both teams. We were down 22. Magic didn't make a three pointer. And uh, rebounds were about the same. And Turnovers, uh, we were up, you know, we were, we were up more than we should have been, and, and Magic were up more than they should have been. So that's probably why we won. Congratulations, Lenard. If you're in Melbourne tonight, stay away from Lenard Copeland, he'll be dangerous. Thanks, Go and enjoy yourself. Thanks. Fantastic. Well done, Lenard man. Copeland hit the winning three point shot, and there's still a lot of people here cheering him on. Let's have a look at the top scorers in the game. For the Tigers, well, Andrew Gaze, another wonderful performance, 33 points. Copeland, 24. Bradkey, 20. Sibley 13, Simmons 6, while well for the Magic. Boland had a great game also, 26 points. Rose 24, Ronaldson 17, Graham 16, and Andrew Parkinson 8. Let's have a look at results from the other games. Well, I guess this was predictable. Yeah, yeah, Gold Coast. Caning Sydney by 30 points, 109 to 79. Yeah. Hobart 83, Illawarra Hawks 102. So a big win also to the Illawarra Hawks. Let's have a look now at what's coming up as far as basketball is concerned on the weekend. Tomorrow, 12 noon. Today, actually, I guess if you're watching the replay now, Basketball Extra, hosted by Billy Woods and Steve Carfino, includes all the NBL and NBA action. There'll be plenty of NBL action from tonight, I can tell you. The games, check your local guides, coming up Saturday night. The Wildcats and the South East Melbourne Magic. You've got a feel for them, even though it is a four-quarter game. It'll be a very long flight. Oh, a long flight to Perth for the Magic. They've got a front up tomorrow night against the Wildcats. Cannons take on the Suns. Brisbane Bullets take on the Adelaide 36ers in a very important game. And our live game on Sunday, the Newcastle Falcons play host to the Sydney Kings. So I'm just about uh, exhausted. <laughs> oh, it was a phenomenal game. Really, the second greatest comeback in league time. history. And uh, I don't know. I've got not much else to say. It was really quite we'll phenomenal. We'll never write off another team, though, will never. we? I promise I never will. We hope you've enjoyed the game. It's been a fantastic contest, as Dean said, one of the great fightbacks of all time. Hope you enjoyed the game. Till we see you again, good night. Our guys are flying, gonna put them on the spot. There's no denying.